Hello and welcome to our channel. We're Jojo and Scott. We live in the Highlands of Scotland. In August last year, we took on a big challenge. We bought a bright yellow van ready to turn into a camper. It's been a much bigger job than we expected, from ripping out the filthy interior, scrubbing away at the grime, to finding some nasty surprises. It's been a hell of a ride, with loads of ups and downs. We'd love for you to join us on this journey, as we take a filthy ex-fleet vehicle, strip it back to the basics, and build up a tiny home on wheels. Thank you so much for watching. We're now looking to attach our electrics all up. So we're going to put on a great big board to attach them all to. But before we do any of that, there's one last in and out job that we need to attach to the van. And that's the shore power connection. We're pre-wiring this before we put it into the wall because the terminals are going to be tricky to reach. This will be on the outside of the van so we can connect our power supply up to something powering us from somewhere else. We have a great big daughter cable coming out the wall just like we have already for the solar panels. X marks the spot. We're going to screw through the front of this thing into this wooden bit. It'll be over the back of this and that will help pull it to the side of the van to seal up, seek a flex as normal and then, then we're connecting up the electrics. marking up where we're going to drill holes to attach this thing. Last hole. Oh, that's right. Just cleaning the metal before we paint it. Help stuff stick to it. I'm alright. Stop the metal rusting. This is, I don't even know what you'd call it, this is a dod of wood, we're going to have this behind the shore power electrical connection outlet thing that's going in the wall, that thing. This is going to go in behind it so we can screw through the front face of the connection and this will hold it hard against the back side so that it won't go anywhere.
do you have to say, Scott? I have to say, I think that's probably the smoothest we've done that so far. We'll just give that a little wipe up and tidy it, and then we're good. And that's the shore power hookup. I should say, the reason we've taken so long to add this thing on is because it actually took so long for this to arrive. So we had to leave it till now. little bit of a mess today. Happens. So from last time we put the shore power connection into here. Since then we have put this wooden beam on here. I'll say why in a minute. And then we've finally managed to finish closing up the vapour barrier. So we're going to try and get the electrics all wired up. First thing to do that is we need a place to put all of the modules and fuse boxes and stuff. So we're going to put a big board across here under the bed and that's what this beam's for, to attach the bottom side of the board to. We'll have solar charge controllers and fuse boxes just all along here. We'll wire these things into them. Okay. Board time. So we had a bit of a dilemma, I don't know, just trying to think it out on how to build this board. So all of the modules have to be on a fire safe type board and that's exactly what this is. But it's a bit thin and not very strong and although you can get it thicker, this is actually left in the house from renovating the house. So we thought we should probably try and reinforce it a little bit and we also just so happen to have some 6mm composite wood, I can't remember what it's called, it's like thick cardboard. Um, so we're putting this behind it to try and give it a bit more strength. So we'll have these two layers. We would have gone for something thicker that was also fire safe, but then anything else that we had in the house was actually quite heavy, so this is what we've gone for. We've managed to get a nice fire safe board to attach all of the electrics to without having to actually spend any more money. They're going to rattle a bit. Best to just glue them together and try and stop them from moving.
just to screw in the rest of them. So, we've got the board to attach everything to. And now we're trying to size out where all of the modules and things are going to go so that they don't get in each other's way. And also, just kind of to have a sensible wiring arrangement. So, first thing, possibly the most useful and important part, is the solar charge controller. The solar panels are going to be connected to this thing, and then this thing will then use the power from the solar panels to drive charge into the battery. But we're also going to have two other ways of charging our batteries. We're going to have a DC to DC charger, which means that we can charge off of the van running in itself. And then we've also got a, well, a shore power connection, which just means we can plug it in to a regular 240 volt socket. There's even a possibility this thing does 110, but that aside. Um, so we've got three ways to charge the lithium batteries. Uh, we're going to have 220 amp hours, by the way, for any nerds out there. Um, we're going to have 12 volt fuse panel. Thinking best to have that to the left side. Uh, we're going to have a box here for some breakers for AC things. So. Uh, shore power coming in and then power come out of the inverter and then um, I've also got a whole load of lots of DC breakers and bus bars connect a uh, big switch for the batteries and other bits and um, <laughs> yeah just finding the right place to put everything now then we'll wire it up so we've got our um, the charge controller that charges the batteries from the van. We've got the charge controller that charges the batteries from a regular connection just to a plug socket. And lastly, we're going to connect up our charge controller that charges the batteries from the solar panels, which are still to go up. Um, so I think this is going to go about here. And that'll leave room for things like the big battery switch, bus bars, Breakers and such should be able to fit that all around here. Seems to go well. We've got all of the charge controllers on now, and the next thing is to just figure out where we're putting um, bus bars and breakers and switches and such. It's pretty toasty to here today. everything in place. I don't think I've forgotten anything. So we've got a lot of breakers going on here. The, the thinking is that we've got a breaker for the input and output of every single module and then supplies to that. Next I think it's just we're gonna hoover the hoover up the dust and then pretty sure we can just connect things up. Had a few more upgrades on the layout of things. First of all, I've made wooden brackety things to hold the cables coming in for the solar panels and for the shore power hookup. Um, I've also attached this plug socket which will give the power to the shore charger. It's just a nice way to connect up the shore charger. So the shore power connection from the side of the van is going to go into a breaker in here. The breaker is going to go into this plug socket. Plug socket into this guy. Solar panel cables into that guy through breakers. Uh, I think we've got all the bits laid out now, so we're now working on just starting to wire it up. First bit of wiring is putting lugs on these things and heat shrink wrap. To put the lugs on, this big tool here, it crushes the little metal lug onto the end of the wire. Should make a nice solid connection. So. We're gonna do that. Just gently flay it. So 
So I have two cable strippers, but neither of them are particularly good for this. This thing here is really just good for smaller cables. This thing here is just making a mess of the cables. So I'm having to just use a knife to cut off the cable insulation. So got a lug on this thing. Yeah, I'm happy enough with that. And this is fiddly as hell. I'm sure I'll get a knack with doing this. This is just the second one I've done. Let the pressure off. Now if that's worked, this thing shouldn't come off. Yep. Okay, good. So now, you just slide this little bit over here. And then I heat it up. And then it should end up looking like that. That's that's heat shrunk. <laughs> Cable. First one done. That only two cages. <laughs> so the main crux of the electrics is now wired up. Um, we're still to wire all of the appliances, outlets, and such into the 12 volt distribution. We haven't wired up the batteries yet, and inverter is not wired up. The main board, yeah. So we're gonna leave that there for now and because we have a few parts to come. Um, the shrink wrap stuff, which is meant to cover over this is, well, we need, we need more of it, bigger stuff. The biggest stuff that we got in the little kit is not big enough for the big battery terminals. So that's on the way. So while that comes, we can do the floor. The floor we ordered, bought, didn't order actually, um, it was on clearance, so some of it's a wee bit damaged. I'm going through the bits and sorting out perfect pieces, noticeably damaged pieces, and pieces that are just off of being perfect. And then we can start laying the floor. Starting to put the underlay down. Quite by chance, the width of the underlay that we've got fits perfectly in this space here. So that's a happy accident. I'll just put my full weight on the. Oh, well. Actually, that's fine to walk on. 
compact a lot better than I thought it would. <laughs> or doesn't compact, I should say. I was worried about walking on the underlay. I think I needed a floor on it to sort of spread the, spread the loom from my feet. That's why it's not going in. It needs a bonk. It needs a bonk. Let's find a bonker. Here's perfect. That's a bunker, all right. I've done this stuff before. It's always just kind of in you go, click. Oh, I'm not comfortable with that. That's the softest hammer we have. Nope, I, I don't want to chance that anymore. I'm just going to try and wiggle this in some more. I don't like the mallet. We got it together, kind of slid it in. The instruction said that's how you take it apart, so I thought it would work in reverse, and it did. Um, I'd love to have a nice straight wall to be able to make the first line, but we don't. So this is the first line, and we're going to work it that way, which is just the most annoying way to work a clicky floor. Then we'll take it that way because we'll then have a nice straight line to go from there. So first things first is we're going to floor in there, in there, in there. The floor is meant to click together. It's just not clicking. Tricky stuff. It goes together eventually, just not quickly. If you get one bit in, the other end pops out. I stopped filming to help. The help was really needed. I'm going to leave that overlapping this board a little bit. That way I can we can get the the panels that will go into each of these spaces made up and then we can use this board to line them all up and then we connect them all up. Well they all seem to line up nicely. Let's stick them together. Most awkward bit of floor. First bit of floor has been laid. Um, we're just working our way back from the awkward shaped bits further out. So the next bit we've got to do is up and around the cap here. It's a new day. We had to call it quits a bit early yesterday because this floor is getting quite exasperating. I'll try and show you why. <laughs> I'm not sure how clear it is on the camera. But the floor over here actually slight, slopes up slightly compared to this point here. So to try and get these flooring panels to click into each other when they're on a slope, when they actually don't click in very easily in the first place, yeah, that was hard work. This panel had to sort of get clicked in, slid along, but also fit to a curve. And uh, yeah. So we got this panel in, we're sweating buckets, and called it quits for the day. Now we have used laminate flooring before. This stuff is vinyl, not wood. Laminate flooring has always clicked together really easily, not this stuff. This stuff wants to help a fight. The 
silly stuff just doesn't want to connect together. It's a bit of a ridge here. It's just not connecting in properly. See the shadow. It's improved it a bit, but it's still got an edge. You might just have to leave it at that. Maybe it'll settle over time and just kind of find its way into place. And the bits we were waiting on to do the electrics have arrived, so we can continue with this stuff. Next up, we're working on, well, attaching the batteries. Um, the position of the batteries depends on the position of the water tank. And these things are all going to be heavy and need to be kind of tied down. So, they all need to go on a great big board. The board is screwed into the floor beams that goes between the insulation um, and we're going to build a sort of just means of attaching these things down to the board. So our first means of attaching things down is screwed in. We'll then get another one of these sticks at the opposite end of the water tank. We'll have another stick in there just attached, screwed on down. Um, and we'll then stop building the hold down frame for there because I really just want to get things wired in and that's all I need to do to be able to set the position of the batteries. We'll get the batteries hooked up and then I think we can get the rest of the electrics hooked up. Am I forgetting anything Jojo? No? Let's see how it goes. And while Scott's been busy wiring everything up I've been getting the face plates ready for all the sockets we're going to have. So we've got six of these metal plates and they were blank, blank face plates. So I've been drilling holes in them ready to attach our 12 volt hookup points. So we've got room for one there, one there. And so we've not quite finished this, but yeah, that's where the switch will go for those. So that was my job yesterday we've got six of these guys and we're ready to get them connected up. Mm -hmm. 